is going on guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video I wanted to discuss a few things to do with thumbnails. Thumbnails are a big part of YouTube and I thought as a small content creator looking to be making more content in the future that it would be a good idea to show you guys how to make a basic thumbnail for YouTube videos and stuff along those lines. So as you can clearly see here we've got my new logo in the background this is actually my desktop and um, I was going to teach you how to make a thumbnail for YouTube and stuff like that. So we are going to start in Photoshop because this is what I use on a day to day basis when it comes to logos and thumbnails. So what you're going to want to do is you want to hit the create new button and See, I've got different presets because of different things that I do. So what you're going to want to pick is either 1920 by 1080 That is the recommended for me because it means it's a higher resolution than a 1280 by 720 So I pick that one just because it's a lot nicer. And you don't really need to change much. You just need to make sure that this is pre pressed on because this makes sure it's in landscape mode, not portrait mode. And all the other stuff doesn't truly matter. So then you just want to hit create. I'm going to go into a, a main browser. So here we are with a blank canvas. So for this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new tab on my selected browser. And for instance, we're going to type something in. So let's say that you want to make a Call of Duty video. So what you want to type in is Call of Duty type in images you don't have to type in images I just do then you go into the images tab so it will show you different logos and let's say for instance we've got a photo there's a good photo so it doesn't truly matter if it matches the output that you're doing in your um, Photoshop but it does make it a lot easier to edit and we're gonna find that photo and we drag it in now, you can click enter here because it will center it. Everything will be fine. This is exactly what we just downloaded. So just click OK. It doesn't really matter what that's about. It's I was on the um, eraser tool by the last time I was here. So this is what you'll get when you come in. You've got your two layers, which is your background, and you've got your um, what, what is on top. So what you want to do, there is two ways of doing this. There is the object selection tool or you've got the more accurate pen tool so I'll show you two different ways there this could work in our favor or this could not it depends on different images so you, well, what you want to do is you want to find the thing that you're going to use in your image so for instance I'm gonna use just the guy wearing what he's wearing unfortunately it didn't work the first time so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to click Control z and that gets rid of the previous edits that you've done and then you can just do the exact same thing again but this time you'll select everything so once you've done that you'll see that there are still bits that haven't been selected properly so what you can do is you right click and it will say layer via copy you want to hit that and then you want to hide the layer that's underneath it which is the full image so once you do that you'll be left with this image here and as you can see it's slightly janky and there are bits missing so there is an easy way of fixing things like this you go over to your um, spot healing brush tool and you just want to you just want to select the top layer so that this is the layer you're working on because if you're working on this layer it won't allow you to do anything because it's hidden and because you can't see it so click on your top layer and where the so what you can do here is you can see what's missing so hit this tiny bit here it hasn't been loaded onto the loaded onto the image so what you want to do is you want to slowly start healing it so down here like so you just want to fill this in and that's working see there's still tiny bits here that need to be fixed so you just go over them again with the brush oh, you have to be careful on what you're selecting here because it can distort the image if it's a an image that requires a lot more precision I'm just doing this for quickness and it just makes things 
done quicker. So as you can see, we're kind of fixing his body here, and there are bits that aren't looking as bad as they did. There are still tiny bits that need to be fixed, so we'll just go over them with the tool. This is completely how I do it myself. You don't have to do it the way I do it. This is just my way. Gonna go round the edge here just to make sure that it's got a little bit more. See, as you can see, it has screwed up a little bit. So what you wanna do is you wanna hit the control button on your keyboard and press the plus button. So once you do that, you'll be faced with what what this looks like. So as you can see, it doesn't look particularly nice here. So what you want to do is you want to round off the edge a little bit. And as you can see, it's not making it any better. So you want to hit Control Z until it gets rid of that area that you just messed up. So then you just want to slowly go round that bit there so that it pops out a little bit. So I'm pretty happy with this. There are still tiny, teeny weeny bits that just need to be fixed, which can be fixed quite easily. And now he's got a hand. His arm's looking a bit jagged. So from here, what we're going to do is instead of using the heel tool, we're going to go to the eraser tool. And as you can clearly see, it's quite a large eraser. If you want to adjust it, you can either go up to here and click this arrow down and it will give you an option of going down to zero or all the way up. The way I do it is I right click anywhere. It doesn't really matter and you can bring it down, but I'm quite okay. I'm normally okay with this sort of sizing. And as you can see, it's sort of jagged edges. So what you want to do is you want to go down from the bottom area. Let me just move the... There you go. You want to go down from the bottom area and you want to slowly smooth it up. Now, the reason I do this is because the next step will make it look awful if you didn't do this bit. So it's starting to look better and better the more we do it. So I'm just going to keep making tiny little erasings to make it look neater and as you can clearly see we missed a bit here so what we need to do now is we need to go back to the other tool and fix that it just adds a little bit more to the area that we're working on so then we want to go back to the eraser tool and you want to make sure that all the jagged edges are gone it just makes the image overall look better and also gives a better a, a, also gives a better overall image and i'm just smoothing off edges i'm not going in too close because if they go in too close things will look, start to look bad and we don't want that as you can see this bit's a bit screwed up as well so i'm just going to get rid of these tiny details but you don't want to go in too hard on it because if you do that then you could potentially ruin the image and now you can clearly see there's this awkward bit where it's coming out and there's nothing there. So what I will do here, just to save time, you obviously don't have to do this, is you just go around the bit that's normal and then you can get rid of the extra bit here. Now we've done this, we can move on to the next step. Okay, so you've got your image here and this is the main layer that we want for the Call of Duty. So now what you want to do is you want to go back to your Google Images or whatever and you want to type in your channel colours. Now this is what I would do if, uh, for instance, I had a channel that's got a purple and a red and black background, for instance. So if I just type in red and black background, it will give me all sorts of options here. So we've got lots of different images. You, of course you can create these yourself, but this is all for quickness and I'm trying to get this done as quick as possible for you guys. So, uh, let's select an image. Okay, I like this. So, what we're going to do is you're going to save it to your downloads. And then you want to go back to your Photoshop edit. So, now what we can do is drag this on. And it won't be, if it doesn't fit, it doesn't matter. You can resize it and the um, it will regenerate it to make it look high, high definition most of the time. So, now we've got an issue of this being on top. And we can't see the image that we worked on. So what you want to now do is you want to go over down to your layers. And you want to select layer 1, which is the one that we've just done all the editing on. And you want to bring that up one so it's on top. And as you can see, it appears in front of us. So now what we've realized is that this is slightly too big. And we want to add some text to this. And we want to do some other stuff to it. So what you want to do to make sure that this layer is selected, go to edit. And down here, and it will say free transform, or alternatively, you can hit control T. So once you've done that, the image is now reselectable and 
even though you've just done all that editing on it, you can move it around again. So I'm going to resize it slightly just so it's not like taking up the entire screen. And then once you're happy with it, click enter. It will resize it and make it look high definition again. So now that I've done this, we've got this layer behind and obviously we have removed this layer altogether so you can't see that so once that's deleted we are left with three layers which is the background the one that you're using for the background of the thumbnail and then what you are looking at as in the key section of your image so you want to select the layer one again which is this one here and I will make something look similar and make it look nice so what you want to do is you want to right click you want to left click double click on the layer one and it will bring up this layer style. So what you can do, you can add blending options if you wish to add like a darkened effect. You've got lots and lots of different options. But the best thing I suggest for thumbnails would be if you want something to stand out, you want to outline it. So what I do here is you go to drop shadow. And as you can see, it automatically applies a little white background. Obviously, you can change this to any color that you like. It doesn't have to be white you can even change it to black but in my opinion i think that the white makes it stand out you've also got authenticity so how how big the it is if you want it just to be a little dimmy outline then you can but i recommend that you do it like that and also you've got the distance between the object so if you want to bring it away from the object a little bit or so on and so forth you've got the size so you can make it huge you can make it tiny uh I usually will put it on about 10 just because it just makes an image stand out a bit more and as you can see it's slightly gone it's round the outside so what you now can see is that there are some bits that we've missed when we were doing that background image work so what you want to do is you want to click OK and I'm gonna zoom in on this area here so once you've zoomed in you want to go down to the area that is a bit bad and you want to still make sure that you're selecting the top layer because if you select the bottom layer while doing this, you're just going to remove the background and it won't look good. So you'll just want to get rid of those extra bits. And as you can clearly see at the top there, there's a little bit of a kink which is going to annoy me. So what I'm going to do is you just slowly go round it so that you make it look neat. And as you can see, his thumb's a little bit messed up, but this is all just because I'm doing it quickly rather than taking my time. So zoom out again, and once you're happy with it, you can basically call that finished. So now that we've done all this, we can now see that there's an area up here which is completely empty, and you've got areas to be able to create other bits or add other bits. If you have a logo and you put that on your thumbnails, you can put that in the bottom right corner, bottom left corner, or whatever. So from here, what I usually do is I will make the selection, which is whatever <coughs> um, I have done here, and make sure there's an area enough so I can make a big enough text. So the text I use is a moving skate for all of my videos so you can download custom custom fonts if you want to do that i can show you that now quickly you want to type in on google da font which is spelt like this i will also put this in the link in the description so you can check it out and it will download font it, it's a little area so what you can do is you can look through what you're looking for whether it's cartoon comic groovy old school you, you name it it's got it and then once you've selected, let's say this one, for, and it will say type your text here. So I'll just type my name, which is Matt Scott YT. And then if I hit submit, it will show me what it will look like in that text. So you can pick what you want for your area. Anyway, back to Photoshop. So this is the completed area. So now I'm just going to hit the left mouse button once. And this little box will appear, which will show you the default that will come up. So... For instance, let's call it Call of Duty Funny Moments. And now you've got this tiny text, but you can't really see it. So what you can do from here, while you've still got the text tool selected, hold control and this little box will pop up around it, which means that you can make it bigger. So what I will usually do here is I will make it so that it's drop down so you can read it your eyes will concentrate on what is coming up on the screen to do with the text so from here what you can do is you can then click this box here which will change the color of your text so what you want to do is you want to make sure that that is completely selected and then i'm just gonna hit red and there you go it will change to red 
all the way to black if you wanted it, you'd name it basically, but I'm going to keep it a white just because I think that looks better. And then once you've done that, you can either call that finished or you can go into the settings tab of your text, which is right uh, double clicking with your left mouse button again on the layer. And then you've got items, you've got ability to add a little outline to that. So if you've got a black background or something that you want to add to it, you can, or you can even add little patterns to it. So if you wanted to add a texture, you can add, like, see, it's got a little bit of a a tint to it now so I can scale that up and make it a little bit bigger and make it so that the depth is a bit bigger or so on and so forth but again this doesn't need to be done it's not completely necessary and I don't bother myself because it doesn't need to be done in my opinion so once you have done all of this and it's looking perfect now you'll want to export it so that you can use it for any video so you want to go across to the top here where it says file and you want to hit export and from here, you've got lots of different options. You can save it for web and you can save it for other stuff. It doesn't truly really matter between save for web and um, quick export as PNG or export as. I usually just export as just because it's what it is said on the tin. And then it will take a second to load. It will show you what it will come out as. And then you can change anything that you want to add anything that you'll need. And then you'll just hit export. Once you hit export, this little save menu will come up and tell you that you can export it. So let's just call it test thumbnail. And click enter. And what that will do is, there you go, now it's been exported. And then what you can then do is you can close this. Close that. Go into your little documents area and then you can click it. And then it will appear, once it's loaded, up like that. And there you go. There's your finished thumbnail. So, that basically wraps up this video. This is basically how I do edit my thumbnails. And once you get to learn how to edit and stuff like that, it isn't difficult. And you can do this in about 15 to 20 minutes to start off with. And now I do my thumbnails in about 5 minutes just because it is easier. Sometimes you get lucky with the ob object selection tool. And sometimes you have to do it with the pen. And with the pen, I'll quickly show you that. So um, what you have to do is you'll click on it. And this area and this little pen icon will come up. So what you then have to do is you have to go around the image. Making sure that you've got the entirety of what you want in it. But of course, I can always show you more of that in another video. That basically wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you are new, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for all the new people who are coming by and saying hi. Um, and I've also launched a Patreon, so if you do want to support me, there is a link to that in the description as well. I hope this was informative and I hope this helped somebody or some people. If you'd like to see some more Photoshop tutorials or video tutorials and how to edit videos, then let me know and I can get onto that. So that's basically it from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see all of you very, very soon. Stay safe, much love and goodbye.